Hey guys, in this video I have some news to talk about regarding biblical signs of the end times. There's a few stories from the recent news I want to touch on, so let's get right into it. The first one is the escalating tensions between the United States and North Korea. I found an article from the journal about this online entitled, As US Warplanes Fly Off North Korea, Trump Says the Country's Leaders Won't Be Around Much Longer. Now those are fighting words right there. And a couple of quotes from this article read, U.S. bombers and fighter escorts have flown off the coast of North Korea in a show of force against its nuclear weapons program, escalating already sky-high tensions. This mission is a demonstration of U.S. resolve and a clear message that the president has many military options to defeat any threat. Pentagon spokeswoman Dana White said, We are prepared to use the full range of military capabilities to defend the U.S. homeland and our allies. This situation has the potential of leading to a war. This is getting serious. The article continues on to say, Pyongyang, which says it needs nuclear weapons to protect itself against the threat of a U.S. invasion, responded on Friday with a rare personal rebuke from Kim, who called Trump mentally deranged and threatened the highest level of hardline countermeasure in history. North Korean Foreign Minister Ri Yong-ho took things further. He too dismissed Trump as deranged and said the U.S. president's threats had increased the chances of military confrontation. Re told the U.N. General Assembly in New York that Trump's vow to totally destroy his country had made our rockets visit to the entire U.S. mainland all the more inevitable. I'm sorry, but was that just an admission that North Korea planned to attack the United States eventually anyway? And if North Korea is developing rockets and nuclear weapons to protect itself from America, why hasn't America already invaded North Korea if they have, by their own admission, been so vulnerable up until now? Something is not adding up here. Not to mention Kim Jong-un is a total despot who has reportedly ordered the deaths of over 340 people since taking power in 2011. What kind of crimes are considered capital offenses in North Korea? An article from Fox News World states, People are publicly executed for such crimes as importing South Korean or American music and movies, or being caught with a Bible. And one of Kim Jong-un's favorite confirmed methods of execution is gunning people down with an anti-aircraft gun. This is how Kim Jong-un's uncle and former second-in-command of the North Korean government was executed. What was left of his body was then incinerated by flamethrowers. And so, judging by the violent and radical behavior of Kim Jong-un, I'm kind of hesitant to believe anything he or his government says to justify their missile launches or nuclear weapons program. What do you think? Is it safe for the United States to allow North Korea to continue developing long-range missiles and nuclear weapons? Let me know in the comments section. Not only has North Korea been in the news lately because of its missile tests and nuclear weapons program, Iran recently launched their own test missile. An article from the BBC entitled, Iran Tests Missile Despite Trump Pressure, states, Iran says it has successfully tested a new medium-range missile in defiance of U.S. President Trump. The launch of the Karamshar missile, which has a range of 2,000 kilometers, was shown on state TV. It is unclear when the test took place. On Friday, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said Iran would increase its military power as a deterrent. U.S. President Donald Trump criticized the launch, saying the missile was capable of hitting its ally, Israel. The Karamshar missile was first displayed at a military parade on Friday in Tehran. It is capable of carrying multiple warheads, Iranian media report. This is a sensitive situation because Iran has expressed a desire to destroy Israel in the past. A September 2015 headline from Mail Online reads, Israel will be destroyed within 25 years. Iranian Supreme Leader issues chilling warning to Zionists and rejects talks with Great Satan, U.S., beyond its nuclear deal. Well, it looks like they're trying to make good on their threat ahead of schedule, might I add. Why are these things happening? I think the Bible offers us some insight. Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 through 3 says, And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, 
that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. The winds that it's talking about here is the winds of strife, which are being held back by angels of God until the gospel is preached to the world. Once that is done and people take their stand for the mark of the beast or the seal of God, when the time comes, and it's coming, the winds will be released. And what do the winds symbolize? They symbolize war. In Daniel chapter 7, it symbolically illustrates the rise and fall of the world's four world-ruling empires which were established by military conquest. That is, warfare. In verse 2 it states, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. A sea symbolizes people and nations. Revelation chapter 17 verse 15 says, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So the four winds in Daniel chapter 2 is symbolically illustrating conflict and warfare between nations to establish their kingdoms. Therefore, once the four winds of Revelation chapter 7 are released, we can expect global conflicts and warfare. And I think what we are seeing now with conflicts between the United States and North Korea, the Iran missile test, and the war being fought in the Middle East and battles elsewhere around the world are those winds starting to break through a little bit. These are signs that the angels of God are soon to let loose the four winds of strife in Revelation. After that, watch out, because all hell is going to break loose. Will this lead to World War III? Some people have actually asked me if World War III is predicted in Bible prophecy. And although I don't see any indication of there being a specific World War III, I also don't see anything on the contrary. So I guess it can go either way. But the only way we will be able to find out for sure is if we wait and see, because only time will tell. But anyway, the reason why these winds are being held back right now is because we are living in the sealing time. That means that God has given us an opportunity to preach the gospel so people can make an informed decision about Jesus Christ and the coming mark of the beast. And that's what should be the most important thing on our minds now and the focus of our prayers. We need to get the word out while we still can because once the winds of strife are going to be let loose, it's not going to be so easy. And also, for my last story for today, Mexico has had another earthquake. This has been its third earthquake in a month. It was a 6.1 magnitude quake according to an article from ABC News. And according to this post online, it was centered about 11 miles south-southeast of Matias Romero in Oaxaca State, a region worst hit by the first earthquake this month. This earthquake did cause some more damage to already damaged and shaken buildings and structures. And I'm not sure if there's a death toll for this specific earthquake, but the death toll for all three of these earthquakes combined is over 300 people now. Not to mention as a result of the damage that these earthquakes have caused, thousands of people have been left homeless. A story ran by PRI.org states, 40,000 people in the southern region are left without homes. That's terrible. The reason being is because of the damage done to their buildings. Some were destroyed and many were damaged so bad that they were deemed unsafe to live in. And that reminds me of Luke chapter 21 verse 11, where Jesus said, And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. He warned us of these things. They are signs of the end times. Alright guys, that's all the news I have for you today. Please pray for the people in Mexico so that God will help them recover. Also pray that the winds of strife are held back for as long as possible and for God to grant His people wisdom and guidance to preach the gospel to the world and prepare for the return of Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to hit the notifications icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future uploads. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it and share it, and check out some more of my videos by clicking on the screen. I have a lot of good Christian videos, which I'm sure you'll enjoy if you liked this one. God bless you.